Anyways, gonna continue from the other save points this time and continue on once to get in that other band ending where I make lost her shit essentially. Oh, yeah, that was brutal. So, uh, if I recall where we last left off with all this, um, I think it was near the point where we get to, uh, well, basically what we saw at the start, near the start of this part with, uh, with Yui. We gotta get that. That's convenient, it was right there, <laughs> like... Saves me the hassle of wandering around blindly, that does. You know, it's just weird, isn't it? It's like Satoshi, Naomi, it's going around, regular as normal, right here. As you can see, there's two of them, because they didn't find Yuka because she got kidnapped. And, you know, Yoshiki didn't join Naomi. So shit hits a fan, you know? And yet they're still just casually walking around here like this. It's like, oh, oh yes, uh, yeah, stuff. But that's video games for you. You can't exactly have them all the time just being, you know, like, constantly in a state of despair. They wouldn't bloody move. But yeah, we're kind of doing the exact same thing we did, you know, not too long ago here. Except it's, well, it's gonna have a similar conclusion. Spoilers, of course, but it's, I did say, it was an inevitable one. But Yoshiki isn't here, so, hmm. <laughs> Can you help me? Uh, probably because Yoshiki didn't tag long. And plus, you kind of, you know, you tore. Well, no, you didn't tore. You, well, she did. She ripped it in half and burnt it, if I recall. Uh, Naomi's student ID and the uh, Sachiko Ever After Charm. That was quite a couple of parts back, but that's what happened last time with this. Before, you know, switching over to play in front of the game to get a different bad ending, but yeah. How are you gonna have any allies when you go full on psycho on everyone? <laughs> as Ayumi pulled the tissue from her pockets, she inadvertently pulled out her student ID as well. Slipped from her hand and immediately fell through a hole in the floor, as if sucked down from below. Well, yeah, I said this was gonna play out similar, but not completely. <laughs> I mean, there are some noticeable differences here now, isn't there? Playing out a bit like the bad ending in chapter 4 where it was just a black screen with text. I wonder if it does that because Yoshiki isn't there so they don't have it on screen for some reason. I don't know how that makes any sense. Shinobaki-san, 
ここを出るわよ It's with, with the sound here, it feels like you can't even tell what the fuck's going on without the context of where they are and how it played out. I mean, it's just like a big bang sound effect, it's like what happens? But we saw that the floor collapses, but we didn't within that bad end, I think, that we had, or did we? I, I can't remember, it was ages ago, but you know what I'm talking about, right? If you watched it. So she escaped, but she didn't because she is, you know, nothing you can do can save her essentially. I mean, they could have at least, you know, you know, since it's like the final chapter and all. Could they have at least have made like an alternate ending where she survives? No. That's actually a big thing in uh, Book of Shadows, which I haven't played. Like, it's a lot of, like, some of it's, like, kind of gives backstory on characters, Miss Yui in particular, for example. But it also has some stories play out from the perspective of, like, characters that get killed off and shit like that. And, like, have an alternate kind of pathing, but they kind of get screwed regardless of what they do, from what I could tell. It's just like, can't catch a break. I realize I... Because he didn't show up with you, you idiot. Weren't you paying attention? No, I figured, did I spoil Book of Shadows a bit by saying that, though? I haven't even played Book of Shadows. I don't even know how much it's got going on to it, but from what I can tell of Book of Shadows is a lot of it's just like alternate retelling of things. Some it gives you some more stories and backstory on certain characters like Miss Yui. And then it's got like one tiny bit of actual legit plot that leads into Blood Drive. And that's it, really. <laughs> And most of it's like visual novel based. Which is kind of, uh. Well, yeah. Blood Drive has a lot of visual novel kind of based parts as well, but it does have gameplay. It's just. a bit mediocre. And, well, to be fair, the gameplay here isn't exactly thrilling, is it? It's pretty basic stuff. It's the story that draws you in. But like I said, Blood Drive. Story-wise, character-wise, didn't do much for me. I didn't quite like it. It was weird. It was... They jumped the shark several times, put in the most unlikable characters they could, and the pacing, the tone, it was all over the bloody place. It was... Indeed. I was trying to make a pun there with Blood Drive, because I just said it's bloody all over the place, but... Fuck it, let's continue. I have no idea what I'm freaking trying to... Oh. How do you even get here? Darkening. That indicates the darkness, by the way. How? I mean, is she imagining him there, or is he actually there? I mean, if he is actually there, how did he succumb to the darkening anyway? The darkening only really kicks in when someone trapped in that school gives in to despair and what reason would he have to give in to despair? 
私大丈夫ゆかゆか怖かったろ痛かったろ俺が俺がついててやめなかったばっかりに責めないでサトシのせいじゃないなあオミあなたのせいじゃないじゃあ誰のせいなんだ教えてくれナオミえっちくしょうちくしょう出てこいよ誰か俺たちを見て嘲笑っているんだよサトシ<笑>どうしたの今窓越しに見えた渡り廊下に赤い服がちくしょうあの本領め思い知らせてやる生きてる人間をなめるなよサトシ待てシェッツゴーンダウン And then we cut to this. It's like, what? This has some weird pacing with the bad endings, but this is kind of why I didn't want to go for this one. Because this shows locations we weren't going to be seeing for a while. And obviously, things have played out pretty badly here. Yuka is dead. Satoshi, darkening, taking effect. Naomi's here. I mean, he did just chase after Sachiko, so she must have led him here, so he'd see that Yuka has indeed been killed. And of course, that would push Satoshi to the edge of despair. And now Naomi is here to see that. I don't know what was up with Yoshiki being there and him succumbing to the darkening, but this is understandable. These guys were all here. How the fuck did Yoshiki get there? How did he succumb to the darkening? Was it all in Ayumi's mind on that? Who knows? But shit's hit the fan here. Satoshi! Satoshi! Sikari se! Do you say no? Naomi. Suma. Ureo mo. Tome da. Nani itteru no? Do you say no? Can't you see? Rikiru kibou ga aite konai. Sonna koto iwanai de yo! Ore no omatsunai no kide hasta. Omae ga motte te kure. Satoshi! Iya da! Shinozaki to kouriu shite saka uchi de issho ni kaeru nda. Uh, yeah, Shinazaki, yeah. The girl who went batshit crazy, obsessed with Satoshi. Yeah, that'll work out, wouldn't it? <laughs> Honestly, can you really blame Satoshi from falling into despair? I mean, I mean, look at that. That would break pretty much anyone, I imagine, if something like that. It's like the game skips a, like, a bit of a chunk of the, you know, progression of the plot. So yeah, it's like, where the fuck's this area? That's kind of why I was avoiding doing this bad ending first. And even now, it's like, there's still no context here, is there? It's like, what is this place? How'd they get there? We'll, we'll see it develop properly as we progress through the game more. 
but it just it stands out to me because it's just like it just feels really out of left field the way some of these scenes pan out because they skip over some things. I wonder. Like if Miss Yui had survived that, she would have probably talked some sense into Ayumi. But then again, Satoshi has fallen into complete despair, and I don't think Miss Yui would be able to snap him out of that. And because of that, Ayumi, you know, is going to be like, no, I'm not leaving him behind. And really, this is just uh, disastrous for the ball. なかなかさ。その幸子さんの切れ端。どうしたの。さとしは自分の思ってるよ。これは由香ちゃんの。かわいそうに。あの子も亡くなってた。うん。それじゃ、そっちに2枚あるんだね。I don't think that's really a fitting word. Psychotic bitch, fucker, something, I don't know. Definitely more than just a real jackass in this context of how psychotic Ayumi is at this point. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fuck. My god, that is fucked beyond. Yeah, she's gone full I mean she was already full cycle, but now she's 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 gone even further than somehow she already was psycho and now she's gone even more psycho and more psycho and just I mean I suppose she wouldn't have been able to get Miss Yui's uh paper doll because she fell to her death didn't she so I suppose she wouldn't have had one when she came here uh, it's just uh, some of these bad endings man the chapter 5 ones are obviously some of the more you know fucked up ones because you know I suppose they were probably saving the uh, more messed up bad endings for last, but they had some messed up ones leading up to uh, chapter 5 as well. But fucking hell are you me? Crazy. <laughs> that was a weird... <laughs> Seriously, what the fuck happened, Ayumi? You came to this place to save your friends, and not only did you fail to do that, but you killed one of them, and now all you can think about is returning to the world of living with your damn Mochida. Well, I've got some bad news for you, Ayumi. You simply came to the darkening, so you're fucked too. We shall see about that. Don't know why he's standing there, though. The darkening? My voice acting? That's a face we haven't seen.
Yep, you're stuck, are you me? Yeah, you killed the only person who could have potentially, you know, escaped with. Then again, there was that information we found out about the uh, charm and how you're supposed to do something specifically else as well. So they probably wouldn't have been able to escape, or would they? I don't know. Oh, there it goes. You're fucked. Probably. Well, she definitely is now. Karma. In the most brutal ways imaginable. Obviously, that wasn't exactly the canon ending, though, was it? Imagine if that was the true ending. It'd be like, fucking hell, that's grim. I mean, it wouldn't seem out of place, really. A lot of horror tends to end on a really fucked note, doesn't it? Which always bugs me about horror. It's just like... It just feels like you just like you watch all this shit play out, and then they just all die in the end, and just leaves you thinking, it's like, what was the point of that? It's like you get invested. I mean, that's kind of the point where the cat is draw you in. So you worry for them. It's like, no, you can't die. You don't, don't go in there. Don't go in there. You're full. You can't die now. And then they all do. And then you're just like, well, fuck. Why did it? What? That? Well, most of the times, like horror movies, for example, they don't tend to develop characters too well, really. Usually in horror. So it really is usually like, oh, that character got killed off. Well, I think that character had like two lines of dialogue and didn't really do much. Eh? Or well, that character was a douche anyway. <laughs> but there are some that are like really develop the character strong and you don't want to see them dying yet. Anyways, though, that was two bad endings. Don't know which bad ending we'll go for next. Let's like we'll see how many we've got left. Wait, why is it only showing free highlighted there? Oh wait, maybe... Yeah, actually, I think... The bad ending we just went through, yeah, I did that originally ages ago, before helping it. So that's probably why. So we've got... Mm, seven? Well, actually, no, it's probably more along the lines of six bad endings. Because that star right there is for the true ending. I assume this one's for an alternative ending. And there's one ending that's a bad ending, but it's also not completely bad. Does that make any sense? But yeah, we still got a ways to go here. But I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.